Okay, um, welcome to our MET session tonight. Um, tonight, uh, we have a very special guest on our channel today. Uh, very, very uh, uh, honored and blessed to have uh, none other than Zoe Wong. So today, as you can see, this is the slide. We're going to talk a little bit and get to know a little bit more of Zoe Wong. So Zoe, I met Zoe was back in 2019. Uh, when I was serving uh, together with Wendy, uh, Wendy Liu of HDBB. Uh, and that was the time where I started, um, you know, volunteering, wanted to serve after, you know, uh, and that was the first time I met Zoe. Uh, and that was like, oh, okay, there's like a worship team, wow, so many. But, you know, fast forward two years later, like until today, little did I know the growth that I've watched has wow catapult, catapulted into like something bigger. And I think, you know, I didn't get to know much about her, you know, and uh, we're going to discover a little bit and things of what uh, Zoe does and what she, does she do. I do have something for us to have a preview. Uh, and that is a little snippet of what Zoe has recently done. But... There's been times when I thought about giving up, but I never did. There's been moments when I've had enough, but I never quit. Something deep inside told me not to stop gotta keep on moving up cause i won't let them win you can try to knock me down you can pull me off the tracks you can never count me out you can't hold me back and even when the times are rough and all you want to do is hide don't let the darkest night dim your light Do you ever feel like it's your moment But you never jumped Do you ever feel like you're just frozen But you really want it Look out of the edge and say the a little snippet of um, of what Zoe had recently done. Uh, sort of like a, a collaboration with a team called Ismuth's and 
Isthmus is actually also done by also another of uh, HDBB. His name is Francis Cobb. Now, Francis is someone I also knew. I uh, worked behind, with him before at, uh, when I was during my time during uh, my internship with YTL uh, back in 20, I would say 2015, early, early 2015. And that's how I first met uh, Francis. And Francis is the guy behind this uh, Isthmus. Uh, he's, the producer and the guy behind this, but um, that was uh, something really incredible uh, done by um, both of them. And just to watch that video when when that came on, I was just like, wow, that's that's um, that's really really amazing. Like, wow, the voice. And when I listen to that, uh, Zoe, like I'm like, am I listening to a? It makes me feel like I'm in the country side, not in Malaysia, and that's like wow, you know, I was like, where am I? It sounds so um, overseas feels like, you know. Also, if you guys have any questions for our guest speaker, I'm sure some of my friends also, uh, when I mentioned you were coming on board, they just said, you know, one of them were mentioning my group members were just saying, wow, so amazed, uh, so much you're doing and they're just so inspired, right? And I just said, yeah, can you believe it? Like, I got to serve alongside this talented person, yet I've only watched the beginning of it. I didn't see the whole truth of it until I'm like, whoa, did I just get the opportunity to just serve alongside this whole talented bunch? I'll just say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. You know, so if you guys have any questions, okay, so I'm going to make it a bit more fun. Uh, you can scan the QR code uh, to put, oops, you can scan the QR code to put in your questions and uh, we will look through them after the session, after Zoe has spoken. Um, and the QR code will be displayed in each of the slides of the questions. So hopefully you guys uh, will then be able to have um, more time to type in your questions or anything, uh, including our Facebook audience who are tuning in or whether it's Zoe's audience, if you have any questions, just scan it, uh, uh, your phone. All you need to do is just take your phone, put your uh, phone and scan it and type in your questions and we'll look through it. Uh, the QR code will be displayed in every slide. So, right. So without further ado, I think, um, welcome again and thank you, Zoe. I think, I, uh, first of all, I needed to formality, needed to just show um, that clip because I think it was really good. My friends were, were just saying, wow, who's this speaker you, you're getting to come on? I said, you know, we want to create impact. We want to inspire people, especially during this time. And I think what you're doing so far is really incredible when I, when, when I look through about, wow. And then you started your own small business, which I didn't even know. And I just looked through, I'm like, okay, this is a lot to process. I think I need to find out more tonight from this person that I got to serve with once uh, a few times during Alpha and I'm just like, okay, we need to dig deep. I, I, I at least get to hear your story, right? Um, so of course, I think without further ado, I think first of all, uh, perhaps just a little fun fact about yourself, just share about what you do. Um, I think just for everybody, yes, it's about you. Uh, what do you do, um, you know, uh, you studying or working and hobbies and some fun facts about yourself. So yeah, perhaps just to get the ball rolling before we go into the deep questions. Sure. Uh, again, thank you, Jesse, for like inviting me onto this. I, I feel so honored. <laughs> I, uh, I'm really grateful to be here. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in and for watching. And uh, OK, I'll share a bit of myself. Uh, well, yeah, I met Jesse at like uh, during one of the alpha uh, sessions and uh, actually we were worshiping together we were doing worship for alpha and that's how i got to know jesse uh so what do i do i serve in hdbb worship on the worship team but i'm not working with them i'm just a volunteer because right now i'm still studying uh, i'm doing my degree in psychology and global studies so there i'm double majoring in these two subjects my bachelor is a bachelor of arts so uh yeah i'm still studying i still have about a year and a half to go and 
I am kind of working. I don't want to call it a, a business. It's, it's because it's, so, it's really small. Uh, what, for context, what I do is I work with uh, polymer clay. And if you don't know what polymer clay is, it's basically a type of clay that has something like plastic in it. It's got uh, polyvinyl chloride, which helps it to harden when I bake it. And uh, so I make like these little charms and um, sometimes clay paintings for uh, customizations. And uh, it's not really, I don't like calling it a business because I donate most of my earnings to various charities or yeah, I just, I, <laughs> yeah, so that's what I do. And I also um, tutor. I, I really like children, so I, I tutor kids online right now, of course. Uh, but I do have a, a neighbor who's fortunate, like I'm fortunate enough to go over there to tutor him. So um, yeah, so that's what I do uh, during my break. But I'm pretty sure that I will try to keep it up during when I go back to uni. Because right now it's still my break, but it's beginning in March, my degree. <laughs> so it's going to be really busy for me, but I enjoy it. I love being busy. So, but when I do have time uh, for my hobbies, I like to, well, first of all, I, I have four cats. <laughs> so um, I'm a cat person. Yeah. And um, one of my favorite hobbies is waking up early and like walking my cat. <laughs> it sounds really funny, but uh, I have to walk this particular cat of mine. His name is Tyler. And um, it's because he's a little bit chunky. He's a little fat. <laughs> so I have to make him walk. And uh, I have to wake up early to do that because I don't want to disturb the neighbors. I live in an apartment and I, I want to walk him when no one's awake so that I don't disturb anyone. I don't know if they're OK with me walk with a cat walking around. So <laughs> that's why I have to wake up really early. And um, yeah, maybe a fun fact about myself that I thought about to share for today <laughs> is a kind of an embarrassing story. So I have shared about this before to some of my friends. Uh, so the first time that I ever sang on stage when, was when I was five years old. And this is because uh, <laughs> I loved to sing at home, even when I was really young. And my mom brought me to this, like, I think it was like a student convention or something that my brother had to go to. And I was obviously too young to join in to, for the activities and stuff. But there was this like section where like you could go up to sing whenever you wanted. And my mom was like, OK, it's your time to shine now. <laughs> go on up it and like just do what you want to do. And then I was like terrified because <laughs> I was excited at first, of course, because like, you know, I get to sing. And I was like five. I don't know what was <laughs> going on. And I got onto the stage and I look and there's like a huge crowd. And there was like it's it's brightly lit. <laughs> like I, I panicked. <laughs> I just started crying but then because i was stubborn so i committed and i cried singing heads shoulders knees and toes knees and toes knees and toes so, <laughs> so i was just like just imagine this like five-year-old little chinese girl <laughs> on the stage singing and sobbing as she points to her head shoulders knees and toes so yeah but that didn't stop me, of course. Uh, that I mean, I got over that fear, of, obviously, of that stage fright, and I started performing um, for like small events with my friends in high school, and then after that, I started serving in uh, in church. Yeah. <laughs> so good, like so good. Like I, I, I think your story when you mentioned about being five years old, I, I. I remember, uh, I think for most of you audience, if you know Graham Norton show, I stumbled upon one of these, uh, you know, they were doing the James Bond film and one of the villain was named Javier Bardem. And Javier Bardem, uh, he shared his story, how his mom sneaked him into a club. He was five years old and he was doing, who is this wacky youngster uh, doing in a party? But, you know, I mean, I mean, just, just, bravery there from from yourself you know i mean when when you mentioned that i was just like i wouldn't even dare to go up on stage i would just you know i'll just disappear but for you to go up and still sing and and do what you just did is just like wow you know it's funny but it's inspiring because i guess i think i'm not sure if you look back at that time i guess if that sh could have been your platform to where you are singing right now which which to hear your story there 
it's and to now, I'm just like wow that that that, that gap like you said you five years old singing there and then now, look at you at you know with Isthmus doing Shine and yeah all this I'm just like astounded. It's just wow and you had that stories and uh, wow wow very 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 and to hear that you're doing double degree okay that's that's even. Okay, I'm even yeah. mind blown because it's, it's just one degree. It's just double major. That's all. Yeah, it's one degree though. Yeah, one degree. <laughs> okay, but still, you're doing a lot. You're doing quite a lot. Okay, forgive me. I got that wrong. No but worries. You're doing no a lot. Worries. You know, friend was just saying so accomplished, right? So accomplished, and now you're doing that, and then you are also tutoring. You're taking care for cats, and the next thing I know as well, which we'll come to it later, is that you also have your own side business, like. Come on, you're this young entrepreneur. She's just so many. I'm like, okay, I got to get her on board because I found out from Zoe was when I started looking at the Instagram story and I came across Oakley and, and I said, hey, wait a minute. This, hey, wait, that's Zoe running it. And I just had to text because I think it was Adrian. So Adrian, Nicole, I... You know, your was your birthday, and I saw that post. And I said, "Wait, okay." And then Julia was like, "Hang on, let me be curious." And I just, you know, curious, just uh, wanted to find out. And like, little did I know, you were doing this behind the scene. That's that's amazing. Like, okay, you have all the youngsters doing all this stuff, but you know, uh, from the beginning of our session, I know of our math session, Div Yang is also a teacher, is doing such a tremendous job as well, but yourself you're still a student and you're still doing all this that's like okay i can't even process you know um if i carry on like this there's so many things i can say but i think we'll move on to the next question i just keep getting myself into more uh well astonishment right and speaking of astonishment right i think you know after sharing yourself uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we met 2019 during the Alpha course along with um, uh, Wendy. Um, perhaps, you know, without further ado, because I shared it, um, and I definitely, you know, what I mentioned here is definitely I do see the blessings flowing through you and everything because the journey we started when I first met until now, just tremendous blessing. Um, and you did something, right? And as, as we saw something about Isthmus and Shine. Now, how did that came about? Of course, firstly, I did mention, you know, the producer behind Isthmus is, of course, Francis Cobb, who is one of the producer and, uh, you know, surf along in the HDBB the team as well. And secondly, I saw, I think I saw your, the writer also behind this, which, which was really amazing. Her name is Denise, if I'm not wrong. Um, she's also an incredible person. I, I knew her so I knew her roughly after I left my internship or re- yeah, well, maybe after my internship she came into to YTL to to quit uh, Francis. but I got to find out find out about her because uh, yeah, through through old colleagues Jeremy Fu and Francis. but yeah, that was just incredible, right? And perhaps just share with us how did this all came about how did? Uh, shine came about for you uh, yeah. before we watch a little one more clip behind the scene there's a really good video right so right. yeah over to you yeah yeah uh okay so like i also met francis in church when he actually he was like one of the first people that i got to know in hdbb uh in 2017 when i was <laughs> when I was 17. Yeah, and I remember just being like this really shy girl, but he was he would always say hi. And like if you don't know who Francis is, he's uh he work he does production for HDBB. So he's always there every Sunday and I, I every service. So <laughs> you can't miss his face even though he's like at the back, but he's so friendly. So he always would say hi to me and my mom. And so that's how I got to know him. And then like in 20 Late 2020, yes, or late, yes, late 2020, he texted me and this was during like one of my semesters in uni, I was doing like my exams online, but then he texted me um, 
out of the blue and he was like hey i'm actually working on this song and I, i'm pretty sure you know about it already but like i'm we're looking for someone to act in our music video so uh would you be interested in that and like would you want to do something like that and i was just like wow i'm so honored that you actually thought of me because like well for, for for one you don't know if i can act <laughs> And like, and yet you you thought you could ask me. It's like, oh my gosh, you believe in me, and without even having to know whether I could do it or not. But honestly, uh, which I later found out that he just genuinely forgot to ask me about that. Like he does, he didn't, he forgot that uh, I maybe I could not act. <laughs> but he just forgot about that, and I just said sure. And then uh, I just went back to studying for my exams. And after that, like in December, he texted me again, and he's like. Yeah, we uh, will set like a date and then like we'll get um, an Airbnb and then like, will you be okay with that? Like, will a bunch of us from church will come and do this. And it's like a passion project, like everyone's going to be in in this and um, it will be lovely if you could join us. And I, I was just like, yes, I would love to. Uh, it's it's such an amazing opportunity. And I'm like really happy that you actually thought about me. <laughs> so uh, and then I went there and then I had to learn the song and had to fake play the guitar <laughs> uh, on like on screen. Obviously, it wasn't me who played it in the actual soundtrack, but because I'm featured in the video, so I was playing um, someone who was vlogging. So I was faking, I was acting as a YouTuber, you know, like, and then I, I would vlog and everything. It's like, a, if you haven't seen a music video, you should check it out. I, <laughs> it, uh, that's the storyline. So I would vlog and then say like, oh, this, during this pandemic, it's like, um, you know, it's not a great time for everyone. So it would be great to just like kind of spread some positivity around. And yeah. so um, I did that. And then I uh, in the music video, the storyline was at which Denise came up with. She is she's an amazing writer. Yeah. Uh, she uh, yeah, she wrote the storyline for me as the girl called Esther. <laughs> so my character was Esther. And Esther would just would write songs and she would sing. And then one day she goes for an audition and um, she doesn't make it. <laughs> so she uh, she gets really like depressed because she feels rejected and everything. And so she cries and breaks down and she calls herself all these mean things with like post-it notes and everything. And then after that, she picks herself up and then says, I was born to shine. I, I'm not meant for this. And so... Um, that really hit me. I think that was the reason why I could actually act it out so well because I really felt that character. I, I felt like that was um, that spoke to me because as a performer, sometimes you're going to get rejected. Sometimes people are just going to say like, I don't like your voice or I don't like what you're doing here and or you're not good enough, like stuff like that. And or that voice could be coming from your own head and that could happen. So uh, that really spoke to me. And then but then like that that like picking yourself up and like believing like god has a better plan for you what's just so encouraging <laughs> and it just fit that song so well and like denise did an amazing job with the song or the the storyline so from there i learned to play the song and then because i had to kind of like mouth the words for the song at first i decided to just like sing it um even though it was not my key and i just sang it and uh, Francis saw it and then he he said like the idea popped into his head when he saw me like preparing for this uh, video and then he approached me and then he was like hey have you ever thought actually I might think about doing an acoustic version of this song and what do you think and I'm like I think you should go for it and then he said what if I featured your voice <laughs> and then I was like really you could find like so many better singers out there and you choose me and I was so like just taken aback and so happy because um it's so rare to I know it's such a blessing like it, it really is uh, it's it's I can I know so many other talented singers who aren't blessed with like are necessarily blessed with people who are immediate to them and then like just give them an opportunity an opportunity like that and like have your voice featured for a song even if like you know you don't ter you don't i don't know become famous or whatever but that's not my goal my goal was just to like actually spread this like positive message even though it's you know outside of worship but this song still speaks to so many people i think it's so simple but it's so positive 
so that's why and especially during you know times like this i think like it you really need some light in this like industry i would say and also just in general for people who are just like driving and just listening like you know you're born to shine so i was so happy that like i got the opportunity to actually be that voice which is insane to me because <laughs> like <laughs> i would have never imagined uh someone would just like you know come up to me and bless me that way and so i was so happy and uh, i of course i said yes and that's how i got into yeah being featured uh and singing that song i i'm really grateful to francis for helping me yeah so so good so so good and you know taking this opportunity you know francis that uh you know just a shout out here i think what you're doing with isthmus is really amazing uh to hear the story uh and you know knowing you in 2015 and then to see that come out that's something incredible but What's more, it's uh, for Denise as well. I think the story writing, um, uh, which I watched the video, which we're going to watch the video of how what uh, up right after this, what yeah. uh, Zoe has mentioned about her acting, and we're going to see that just right after this because yeah. it's really incredible story. What how they've written it, I've. But also, uh, yeah. Sorry I've, to interrupt, but sorry. like, um, yeah. yeah, the people that shot it as well, like they they worked so hard on it. It was just. They were doing this all for free and it was like so passionate you could just see the heart in in mm -hmm. all of like the work that they did and they did it so fast and i just yeah i just want to like thank all of them who worked so hard on this yeah just everyone it's, it's so good it's so yeah. good so we're gonna watch it and we we're also gonna watch the amazing acting that uh zoe had poured her heart into this as well and as much as uh, her acting as well it goes extend to the team behind it francis denise and all those who are watching so we're going to watch it right now uh so this is this is uh oh yeah by the way so it's on spotify you guys can check this out and it's also on youtube uh the album is out you can click isthmus and you'll find um the album there and part of it uh, one of it is uh featuring zoe which is called shine so yeah Right, so let's have a look. Uh, let me just put it on uh, a better way first so that we can watch it. All right. All right. Hi, my name is Esther and welcome back to my channel. In light with what's happening today in the world, I thought it might be nice and it would be good to share some positive vibes with you guys. And the good news is you guys can be part of the video too. And um, I'll be singing a song, but you can be part of this by taking a picture of yourself and writing a positive message about yourself like this. Submit it to me and then you'll be part of the video. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this song. It's called Shine. There's been times that I felt like giving up. But I never did There's been moments when I had enough But I never quit Something deep inside me told me not to stop Gotta keep on moving up
it's your moment, but you never jump. Do you ever feel like you're just frozen when you really wanna? You cut off the edge and say that you're not scared. Live a life with no regret. Well, you don't have to run. Love who you love who you are. Shine like a shine like a star. Follow you, follow your heart. And you don't need a reason to love who you love who you are. Keep shining like a star now. When all the lights are down, I'll keep on burning bright. You can try and knock me down. You can move me up with traps. You will never count me out. You can't hold me back. And even when the times are rough, I know you want to do is I. Don't let the darkest clouds dim your light. Wow, that was that was you know, that was you know I I watched it and I'm just like I can really feel it like really you do feel the, uh the atmosphere of that you know uh oops sorry yeah you really do feel the whole the whole thing from the beginning right I I really felt the the vibe and as you shared. The, the emotional the emotions that you pour out the um the 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 play to the script you can really see you can really feel how the the direction of that 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 clip right how they wrote the story you can really feel it I really felt it the whole way I really felt the whole emotion and that that is really 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 incredible and wow guys I think you know to have her share that. I, I'm just like, okay, now I really can, I can't process it at the moment. It's just too, oh, you know, too real, too, too <laughs> what for me to, to process. There's so much things I can say, but, you know, um, yeah, that's amazing. And I really, really salute uh, all of you guys for putting this out. I think it's really encouraging. I do feel really encouraged by that yeah. as well. And as you say, it was it's a, really, yeah. yeah, I forgot to mention that the video producers were Nigel and Kelly. They are so good. Um, they also do their own, like they they take videos for people. They they make wedding videos for people as well. So this is like a, they they did that. This was the first music video they've done, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it's like a it's like everyone's trying something new on that project. So it was just like a, an amazing experience for I think for I can speak for everyone. Like it was just a collective great experience for all of us and a great learning experience as well yeah so so good um you know with that really i could have just ended you know because there, there's <laughs> so many incredible things that you are you yourself are doing at such an age um where it's quite rare to see this uh, or personally maybe i'm not but it's quite rare for me to see this uh young talented person and, you know still very young you not even well I think this is your big year, I would say. I won't mention the age, but you did mention 17 when you're 17. So I, I assume today this year is a big year. Um, but for you, you're doing such a great thing. I, I can't remember what I was I doing at 21 years old. I can't remember what we all were doing at 21. But to hear this shows that there's, there, there is 
a lot of incredible people with talent coming up. And, and I'll just say that's kudos to all of you who are coming up uh, and taking this effort because my age, as I said, I don't know what I was doing, you know, just trying wow. to study and get through. But it's just amazing. And with that said, I think we need to go on to this because this, this is when I just found out from Adrian's story mm. that, uh, yes, uh, you are also running a small business of your own. And again, share with us what got you to come up with, with this business. So for those of you who don't know, you can follow her uh, her page. Her small business name is called oklay.art on Instagram. Mm. Uh, and so, but I'll leave it to her, Zoe, to explain what she does and what does she business do so yeah yeah so like I mentioned a little bit earlier uh, I just use polymer clay and I make all these earrings and studs and uh, but I like most to do clay paintings although it takes so much time and it's really hard for me because like I'm not really good at drawing but I'm good with clay but uh, so I but I need to incorporate two of that together uh, but anyway the how it came about was um, I actually didn't know the existence of polymer clay until like last year, May, uh, which is 2020 May. So I um, was just like scrolling on Twitter for a while because I was I was on an intermission. I took an intermission from my studies last year when the pandemic hit, uh, which was actually something that was a little bit difficult for me to deal with because I I like finishing things. <laughs> I don't like, uh, I'd, okay, that might be a, a thing that I'm still like trying to work on I, I don't like um, giving up <laughs> and for some reason like taking a break from studying felt like giving up to me it was almost like I, I couldn't admit that the pandemic and online studying was getting the better of me I, I didn't want to admit that but then I realized like it really doesn't matter so much like it's it's all I get is just like, you know, I, I just graduate a little bit later. But bef but other than that, it's completely fine. You know, but I can't speak for, you know, people who can't graduate late, who they, who have to finish no matter what. And I just, you know, I think they're the, so strong. But it's also okay because I am able to just stay, take a break for a while. And I'm grateful that I did because that's how I started Oakley. I was on a break from studying and I had just been tutoring one student at the time. So I, I had a lot of free time. And so I was just on Twitter and like, <laughs> funny enough, this girl whose name is also Zoe, <laughs> she posted about this uh, polymer clay craft that she made. And I was just like, what is polymer clay? And I really want to try it out. <laughs> and she has my name. So like, you know, I, <laughs> I probably could do it too. I just want to try it. So, and then I thought like, okay, wait, I can't get make this money go to waste. So I made myself promise to myself like, okay, if I do this, I need to learn properly how to do it. And um, I'll enjoy it. I know that I will enjoy it much more if I do it properly. I don't want it to be one of those things where like you buy it and then you play with it for a while and then it's like okay that's it like I'm not um I've tried it before and then that's it but I just want it to be something that I want to learn how to do it and if I don't like it then yes I can give it up but if I do like it then you know what I don't know what God's plans for me are you know God's plans for me are so I I kind of just like bought it in faith I googled it I bought some <laughs> I, and then I just started making these little things for myself I started with flowers and then like because I I'm more drawn towards flowers <laughs> I'm like a huge softy for pastel colors and flowers and like, I'm just like a very girly girl <laughs> so so I made these things first and like and then I just fell in love with it and then but at the same time, I felt like there has to be something more here. I, I, it, I'm more of a kind of like an intuitive thinker. So if I am drawn to something, I, I know it's important, but I don't necessarily know why. So I was trying to find out why I'm so drawn to this and why have these circumstance under these circumstances I'm brought here. So it's basically kind of like I'm asking God, what am I supposed to do with this? And then, um, and then another thought strike uh, struck me. I was just thinking like, during the pandemic, I've been feeling really down, not because of myself. Well, not just because of myself, but because of like, I used, because I stay near Pavilion, uh, Pavilion Bukit Bintang. 
I used to go there to do my shopping and obviously church is nearby. So I would be there a lot. And the reason why that connects to my story is because when I go there, I see a lot of kids like um, marginalized kids who would be at the streets and like, you know, begging for money and, and for food. And every time I go there, I make sure that I buy like bread or, or um, crackers or whatever it is that like, you know, and water, of course, and I would feed these kids as much as I can. And then I hadn't been able to do that, like when I was stuck at home during the MCO. So I was thinking about these children and I was just thinking, I need to do something about it, but I don't know how. And then I was just kind of like, God, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm stuck at home. I, I'm not studying. I am. I can't serve at church either because like it has been all online services. And at that point, they haven't been uh, asking me to go back and record yet. So I'm literally just, I, I don't know what my purpose, purpose was at home. So, and then God, it's kind of like that story in Moses where like God told Moses to go like, hey, uh, go lead all these people out of Egypt. <laughs> and, then, and then Moses is like, what, but what am I, who am I? And like, what am I supposed to do here? I don't have anything. I can't, I can't lead all of these people. And then God was like, what's in your hand? <laughs> and then Moses is like, a, a staff, like a stick? What am I supposed to do with a stick? <laughs> and then God's like, throw it on the ground and I'll turn it into a snake. So it was like one of those moments for me. I, I was asking God, like, what am I supposed to do? I can't do anything at home. I'm, I'm not rich enough to, to like pay all of my money to, to charity if I could, but I don't even know if they're going to do anything about that money either. So, and then God was like, well, what's in your hand right now? I'm like, clay, what do you want me to do with clay? <laughs> and then, uh, and then like that, I just, you know, that verse, like several verses were speaking to me at the time, which was such a blessing because I, I, you know, if I, if it weren't for those um, readings, I don't think I would have started Oak Clay. So I started it because, well, obviously, I don't know if you can see it on my bio. It says, let all you do be done in love. So that's the first step. Then the second one was um, from, I think it was like from the book of Luke, where it says, um, when much is given, much is expected. And I, I've always felt like I've been given a lot, but I don't know how to use it. <laughs> and I know it's been, I'm expected to do something. And then the third one was uh, from the book of James. I think it was like James 1 verse 27. It says like, um, you need to basically take care of the widows and the orphans. And so since children really struck my heart, I, I, my heart always breaks through these kids. So I, I thought, okay, then I will work with um, widows and with orphans. So I started in July, I started posting uh, my clay crafts online. And then I said, okay, 50% of these proceedings, which is basically everything that I earned because the other 50 would go into investing, buying more clay and making more stuff. So 50% of these proceedings would go to this charity called Women of Will. And they were helping these women who were widows and also divorcees or um, just single women who needed help in starting their own business. And so I donated half of my earnings there. And then in August, I, dis I planned to work with Dignity, uh, which is the, ch uh, the foundation for children. So I, which is a foundation that I really like resonated with like if it would be a dream if I could like <laughs> volunteer there one day to teach these kids so since I can't now so I'll just I donate it to them uh, and so that's how it kind of began for Oakley and fast forward to today which 10% uh, of the earnings are still going to dignity so <laughs> yeah oh my goodness can I I, I I'm I'm lost for words. Like, I think my friends all are just sending messages like, how is this girl at a young age doing so much? And, you know, I, I sit down with my group. I said, exactly what you just said. It's so amazing what you just shared. Um, Zoe, because how I came up with this, I think, we all think MCU is bad. We think it's, oh no, God, this disaster struck. But it is in the midst of the disasters that you probably, that's where God will use you the most and create something out of it. And I, I'm so like 
I am so like moved by that that message that you just shared because with my group, we also founded this podcast whole thing at this time during the MCO. It was also in July 2020 when we mm. decided let's build up and encourage people. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can't go out to you know physically go out and reach out, at least then we um, at least make them aware, spread awareness, right? And yeah. to hear your to hear what you just said about why you start this just really moves me a lot to to just say wow i knew tonight was going to be something uh, uh, a moment for all of us to reflect but wow we just went beyond that i'm just so moved right oh, and no. <laughs> and uh and that's the whole purpose we 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 kind of you know I I suppose we look at this pandemic as well as as a place. That's why I think the the values it's so related. Your story relates to how we started this. It's on the three mm. basic values of we need to pause, we need to reflect, and then mm. we carry on. Yeah. And when we do reflect, that's where the greatest ideas come mm. about. I believe. Wow, you had that that pause moment. Your story. Why were you going through that? Why there were so many things? And that's where, when you shared how Okay started, and you just shared what you just shared. I'm just like, wow. We are not. I'm. There's so many other people also starting. You know, they're they're doing things they've never done before. Oh yeah. Like out of the blue, uh, and I'll just say, wow. And your your story also is not an exception as well. It's just incredible I'm, I'm wow just so moved so any anyways guys you know um if you have any more questions again the qr code is still there just type it out um because we're just going into the last question and uh before we wrap things up um but wow what a story so guys <laughs> go to your instagram open it up hit to okay Give her the, you know, she's doing this for charity, and and I'm I'm definitely going to do it because the story behind this is so incredible, right? How people relate, how do we relate to people is through the stories that we share, and that's what people buy. They buy the stories, not about, you know, or I know you and that connection is important, but it's mm -hmm. through the stories that you know leaves an impact, and so that really leaves an impact. So yeah, guys, go check out Oakley if you haven't. And as she said, you know, 10% of the proceedings goes to charity. And that's yeah. incredible. Really, really Thank kudos you. to you, um, <laughs> Zoe. Thank you. And last but not least, of course, I need to put a little few things, <laughs> but uh, it's not an advertised, but, you know, um, it's coming to the last part. You know, a lot of us, um, I, I had a thought about this because uh, we've covered quite a lot of topics with me and my group. And uh, the one thing that we wanted to understand a little bit more um, is a bit of worship. What does worship mean to a couple of people? And so that's why I, at the end of this, because your incredible journey from the start to now, and then you are now part of these incredible teams uh, led by mm -hmm. Stu um, and Abby and the whole group of mm -hmm. worship. I, I can name most of them, Wendy, <laughs> Now, you know and so on this so such yeah. incredible because i had the opportunity to you know get to serve alongside these amazing oh, yeah. talents um but you know share with us you know what worship is all about for you as as a worship leader um because for a musician yeah i to me worship is something we praise god but you know when you guys need to worship and all these things share with us what does that mean for you what is it to be serving alongside other amazing talents of of your caliber you know yeah mm. Mm. what worship is about for me personally i think it's 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 a necessity uh yeah it's a way of like connecting with god talking to god i feel like that's uh one of the what is worship to me i think that's the essential it's a way of communicating with God and um, it's just like an expression of love and adoration at times and praise at times or sometimes even an expression of pain uh, during like it's a it's an honest expression there's like a um, a saying that I remember that's coming to my mind right now that says like if uh, writing is like a way of expression but if you if what it cannot be written is sung and what cannot be sung is danced so 
I can't dance, <laughs> but I can sing. And、uh, I would love, I, I remember, oh my goodness. So、uh, my journey in worship began in maybe late 2019. So when I joined in,、um, actually, when I first became a Christian, so I didn't grow up as a Christian. Uh, I got saved in 2016, so which late 2015, 2016. And then、uh, the moment I actually, the reason why I got saved was worship. So I joined Kingdom City, and at, before that, I was,、uh, I was an atheist. I didn't believe in anything. I mean, like, I had a Bible when I was young. My mom bought it for me just because、uh, she wanted me to learn English. <laughs> she wanted me to improve my English. So she bought me a kid's Bible. And she didn't even know what was in it, but she, she instinctively knew it was good, I suppose, which is a blessing. So I did read it when I、uh, grew up. So it wasn't like I didn't know about God, but I had no one to guide me on it. I didn't know what this was. I just thought that they, this was a book of stories. And then,、um, and that was it. But then in 2016, I ended up being in Kingdom City with my mom. And then, like, the worship just, oh my gosh, it was,、um, as Gen Z's would say it, chef's kiss. <laughs> and then <laughs> I just,、uh, I, okay, well, jokes aside though, I, I think I cried. Yeah, I definitely just like teared up because I could feel in this room, like, immediately I just felt, oh my gosh, this, this is something different. And then, like, I feel like everyone's home. And then I want to be part of that home. And so I,、um, that's what like, struck me first. And that was worship. So I, I think like, in the beginning, it was all about that ever since like, the, the first day. So,、uh, <laughs> being a new Christian, I didn't know anything else other than that. But I, I mean, I, say, I got saved. I, I knew how to worship, kind of. Like, I, know, I know how to sing. So I sing the songs and stuff. But then, like, you know, it really is like, You need to cultivate that relationship before you can actually understand what you're singing. So,、um, like, it took a while. And then I wanted to serve on the worship team, but I knew, like, God was like, you know, you're not ready. Wait till, wait till you actually understand our relationship, like me and God. Like, you need to know what, how much I love you before you can sing it. I need you to be filled with my love before you can. Sing about my love. <laughs> so, and, and that took a while for me to accept and understand because I really wanted to serve on a worship team, which I guess at that time was not with the right intentions. So that's why God like, was like, you know, okay, okay, I know you're really enthusiastic, but like, wait. <laughs> so I, I waited and、um, I waited till 2018, which ironically became like, oh no, I don't know if I'm ready. And then God's like, you are now. <laughs> when I said you aren't, you, you wanted to, but now, like, when I said you are, and now you don't want to, like, what's wrong with you? But yeah, he, he, by God's grace, I,、uh, I ended up being on the,、uh, in the auditions for HDBB's、uh, worship team. I was so nervous. I, be, I remember praying about this during my first Alpha, se like alpha、uh, session that I joined. And I remember Hannah, she's part of the worship team as well, but now she's in the UK.、Uh, she, she prayed for me because she, she was my leader in that Alpha group. And then I told her, like, like little, really timidly, I said, I, I really, because she asked me, like, what, what, what can I pray for you on the Holy Spirit weekend? And then, she, then I said, I really want to join the worship team. And I started crying <laughs> because I was so scared. Like, I, I, I really wanted to, but I'm so scared. And then she was like, oh, whatever. Don't worry. We'll pray for you about it. Oh. And, you know, she tried comforting me. And then after the Alpha course ended, I went on the、uh, audition. And guess who was auditioning me? It was Hannah. <laughs> It was Anna and Wendy, and then I was just like, oh my gosh, these two like, women of God and like, worship leaders that I look up to. And one saw me cry about this, like, hey, she can't say no to me now, I guess. <laughs> I felt so bad after that because I was thinking, oh, oh, I really should not have cried in front of her for that because now she feels bad even if she wants to say no. <laughs> But of course, no.、Um, I got in and they were so kind to me. They, they taught me so well. Like, they, they really put their heart into training me and like making sure that I was cared for and that like I, they really tried to like cultivate me. And I was so grateful for that. I, you know,、um, it's rare to find leaders who willingly take you under their wing. And it's just so 
such a blessing to have someone who is willing to teach you and coach you and just care for you like like um you're 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 their younger sister or their their child <laughs> so it's it was so such a blessing for me and then yeah it's it's amazing to serve along next like you know it sometimes blows my mind because they're each so humble like Stu and wendy and hannah and everyone else on the worship team they are so talented that they could be they could be touring the world like they're that ta- that level of talent at least in my opinion anyway their voices are so good and also their talent in like musically it's just amazing so i i really feel like i'm walking like with giants but then like that's not it doesn't strike me that way until i remember that they're talented they're that's because they're so humble and i think i really want to to become like them that's when you know you found like good leaders around you or great examples around you because I really want to be like them. I want to just have exude that kind of humility and like and do it all for God, you know, not 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 for myself or or anything. It was it's just purely for God. It um it sometimes like makes me think like it's almost like, you know, each time I I receive a praise or like, you know, or like a compliment. I like to think of them as like flowers and then I'll receive the flowers. I'll say, thank you. And then I'll like tie them into a bouquet and then just offer it back to God. Like, you know, God, this is for you. I, it's not for me. And I thank you that I'm able, I'm given this chance to receive these flowers so that I can give it back to you. So it's like, I, yeah, that's my experience in the worship team. And yeah. (laughs) So good. So good. Like, I'm so blown away, um, you know, also this hearing this from you, it's, it's just, wow, I, I, it just, you know, reminds me of when I also, you know, when I first worked with Alpha in 2017, mm-hmm. and that's when, um, uh, prior to that, as you said, they're also humble, they're mm-hmm. also generous, and of mm-hmm. course, being ge- uh, in generous, we have also uh, previous worship leader named Jen as well. Jen, mm. That's why it's called generous. Uh, I worked along, served alongside them. They're so amazing. And and yes, I, I, I'm definitely, I was, I was about to get Wendy to come and share about <laughs> worship, but you know, she, uh, but we'll get, we'll definitely get you, Wendy. We need to hear your story. Because, <laughs> because I, when I served, I, I remember seeing her as well come to faith at that time, Wendy as well. So to see her growth, to be a part with her, to be a part with you in this journey and to see you guys flourish, I've been like tremendously blessed. But the, how the whole process went, I didn't know. And so to hear that and to hear all this cultivating of good um, culture of worship and everything mm. is so powerful. Like, like it really, I, I, I definitely can agree with you on that. You're serving alongside you guys, especially with Hannah. Mm. Um, Stu, uh, Leon Jala and the rest mm, they are just yeah. so incredible but wow you know <laughs> that's so good to hear your testimony Zoe and I think all of us here tonight my group are blown away by your <laughs> testimony and touched by it and I think this will live with us in, in oh. uh, helping us to pause and reflect and carry on mm-hmm. to say that you know what you've, you've pointed out use do with uh, do with what you can with what mm-hmm. you have and mm-hmm. that's so encouraging by what you mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Um, I just put these two video clips, you know, for those later on you want to watch. Uh, this is this is really amazing. Um, you you have of course Wendy leading worship, but also I I did really felt the anointing when we watched the worship this mm-hmm. service, and that's really struck me how God has really moved you as well in, into this place. And yeah, it's so so good to hear the story. And so wow. Thank you for sharing your story, Zoe. Oh, no worries really, at all. I'm really, really just moved. I think this is this is one of the stories that I've been moved, oh. like more than not to say deep. Deep story was incredible. I was moved, but this, wow, your story is just amazing. Okay, before we get too carried away with emotions, like <laughs> you just get in touch and all this, um, let's get into the question. Hopefully, for some of you who have uh, questions uh, oops uh, we let's go through uh, hopefully you guys have uh, wrote your questions uh, we are going to just switch page now I'm going to share 
we're going to have a look at your questions if you have for Zoe. Zoe, if you're okay with that, uh, if sure. you have any questions, just a quick one. We'll just do a quick uh, yeah, yeah. sharing. But uh, yeah, um, guys, for those tuning in, anything at all uh, you'd like to share uh, about what uh, Zoe has just shared? Because I personally was, I'm moved, right? Really moved. Even before she came in, that's why at the beginning I was kind of stumbled. How do I start this with, with, with Zoe? Because it's oh. it's it's a topic that is gonna just blow, um, yeah, blow 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 me away. So we are going to just look at the questions right now, and wow, there's there's some of them. So hope Zoe, um, do, do you able to see the shots here on the screen that sure. I'm just sharing? Yeah, so. There's three questions, and one of it, I think the first one was, what inspired you to write songs? Mm -hmm. uh, really beautiful. Um, okay, so before we go that, Zoe also, later on, Zoe has her own YouTube channel as well. <laughs> you can go and check it out. Uh, there is there's some, so I think, like perhaps really old whoever videos. wrote it, did your research. <laughs> so, yeah, so what inspired you to write songs? Really beautiful. Uh, uh, you know, do you, yeah. Yeah. So I do write songs, but I, I haven't posted in ages. I, uh, I kind of keep them to myself for now. Uh, the re recent ones that I've written, there are some really old ones. So if you dig up like my YouTube channel, there are like some that's there that I'm not necessarily like really proud of <laughs> uh, right now. But like, I, I mean, like it's still there. So if you can find it, it's, it's there. Uh, um, what inspired me to write songs before? Before God came into my life, um, or before I'm, I found God, I guess like I just, uh, I guess I'm like my dad. My dad is a songwriter. So when he was in his teens, he came out as a singer. Uh, he was in the Mandarin industry. So he toured in China and Taiwan for a while. I think maybe Hong Kong as well. Um, but and then I guess like because that's that's how I grew up. I, I grew up listening to these stories that my dad would share. And he used to be like when I was born and for a while when I was a child, he was still in the music industry as um, as a judge <laughs> for uh, for singers. And uh, he taught he coached some singers as well. So uh, but ironically, he never taught me just because uh, not not like not to to like blame him or anything it was because he didn't want me to get into the industry and that was at the time when we were all weren't saved yet and he knew how dark it could get so he didn't want me to enter but obviously i have his blood so i'm gonna sing <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh so he taught me how to play the guitar so i would i would sing at home and i would write some like silly songs or you know whatever <laughs> and uh i did post some in on youtube so i guess short answer would be my dad and then now would be my father in heaven <laughs> he would inspire to for me to write some songs but i'm not like ready to post them or anything but yeah <laughs> well i mean judging by what you're doing there's so many incredible things you're doing right now i think that's really understandable and i guess it's when god calls you to hey it's time for you to write songs yeah. <laughs> it's time to do that wow wow amazing um <laughs> The next one, uh, we have a question is, do you have any more songs coming out? Oh, no. um, again, I think that's based on Reddick but uh, yeah. adding on, tell us more about Oakley Art, where can I buy your charms and clay paintings and great job on Shine. Um, mm. Maybe I could help this person out in a bit mm -hmm. through your Instagram. Is that yeah. there where you could, mm -hmm. is a link attached yes. there for them to right? Oh, that's I'll nice. Be yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, it's if you can't find that link, then it's on oakley.art. Uh, so on Instagram. So if you want to go there, then, then you can just like DM me or uh, check out what I have already done. And then you can, yeah, just send me a message and then tell me what you want and then I'll make it for you. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So again, um, you know, it's on the Instagram page. Uh, you can check it out, Oakley's Art, and there's a link for you to right uh and to uh, and order your stuff um and last but not least is what's your favorite song to sing during worship wow Ooh, whoever asked this, this is good song. because i i always started to think or oh, i didn't even have the chance to ask whether steel or hannah before mm. hannah flew back what was their favorite song to sing but mm. good question yeah what's yeah. your favorite yeah so. i think uh 
Hmm. Personal worship, then uh, I would sing... Hmm. There are a couple of songs. So there are some songs that are like indie, uh, indie worship. I like to listen to, to those bands. Like, well, uh, yeah, you know, um, hmm. Chris Renzema is a really good one. And uh, if it's more for more well-known songs, I think I really, for now in this season, I think my favorite is Transfiguration by Hillsong. Taya is like, oh my gosh, her voice is like, there's just so much anointing in it. And Transfiguration is just the most beautiful song to me right now. It's um, it's literally all about Jesus, which is how it should be. And then like, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like the word made flesh and it's like Transfiguration. It's just, oh, I love that song. So I would, I would sing that song in personal worship. So right now, I think that's my favorite song. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Great, yeah. great. Oh, we just had one more just popped in. I just saw it. Incredible. I think they just uh please share more about your vision in helping the children you mentioned. Oh mm. wow, great question. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um right now I'm working towards so I've heard this thing before where like uh I think it was from a show maybe that said like if you know what you want to do, then from this moment forward, every decision you make will be for that. So um, the beginning, the, the most important one was for right now for me was, you know, to, to, to follow God's footsteps and to be um, who he wants me to be. So that's every decision that I make right now would be for that. And then the second for me would be what I think my calling is, but I'm so young. I don't really know what that is yet. And uh, so I know, but right now I know that I have this heart for children. So right now my decision making is based on that. Um, so, for example, I intend to use my degree in like um, for social work. So I I have thought about going to corporate work for like you know stable job and everything, all that stuff. But like, it's just not. I can tell that's not what I my heart is set for. And uh, if my work is not in ministry, then. I, I'm going to be doing social work either way. So I'm going, I intend to, my, I think my dream would be like starting a school and um, seeing kids get the education they deserve. So I'm big on education and that's why I tutor. That's why I donate to Dignity because they also teach kids that are underprivileged or marginalized. So I would love to do something like that in the future. I think that would be my current vision right now. It's not very clear, but that's what I see. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's that's really, really, oh. <laughs> really, really amazing. And I, I think I think you know at the end God will place the right path in in your journey. And what more I think in HDBB, if I'm not wrong, you have Div Yang who is also a teacher. Oh, yeah, you I have teach from Malaysia. a couple of yeah. them. Mm -hmm. There in, in HDBB is exactly. just incredible, you know, not just Dave. Uh, I think you will, I can't remember, you have a couple of them there, but I know Dave is one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's also part of the worship team, part of the mm -hmm. guitarist team, he does. Um, but yeah, yeah, wow. I, I mean, for, for what you're doing at your age, it's just remarkable again. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, somebody just put in what's your favorite Bible verse? Mm -hmm. Oh man, it changes all the time. But right <laughs> now, <laughs> right now, uh, I think what um, spoke to me most right now would be, I know this is a weird one. So it's Esther 416. It's actually taken a bit out of context. But basically, it's, um, it's about Esther saying like, um, you know, uh, let's all fast together and um, uh, we're going to do what God wants me to do. And if I perish, I perish. So it's like kind of like, I don't know why, but that like, that really just like, I don't know, pulled my heart because I I relate to Esther it, I or I want to become like Esther. It's more of that spirit that she has. It's like, oh, um, I'll give it all. I'm going to do everything I can do. And if I die, I die. <laughs> so it's like that kind of spirit that I am drawn to and I really want to um, embody that. And like, I want to be, uh, you know, God's um, warrior or whatever it is, like an image that comes to your head. But like, it's it's that spirit, like, I'll give it my all. And if I die, I die. 
<laughs> and what's the matter? You know, like, you know, there's internal life with God, so it's okay. And there's nothing to fear. So it's that spirit. Yeah. So that's my current favorite Bible verse, I think. Wow. That's incredible. I mean, when you say that, and then what are the odds that the video exactly. you're playing yeah. the person asked her? So yeah. I don't think it's coincident. No. You laugh, but it's no, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I'm just I'm just blown away again how yeah. that this two and you you link. Oh gosh, yeah. okay. You know, this this is wow, this is so so good. But Wow, uh, I think that's it. You know, uh, that's amazing questions by you guys for asking. Thank you for asking, uh, you guys. You. And uh, just before we wrap up again, as I said, um, just go through one more, a few more things a little bit. So, again, Zoe, thank you for your time. So, you know, your sharing has been really inspiring. I think my group of friends were, you know, were just, you know, one of them just texted me uh, who are on Facebook Live watching and just saying, I don't know what to say it's just been so moving this session oh, it's um, my pleasure so really incredible thank you um as i said right now uh this is Sazori. you can follow her on youtube you can check her videos out <laughs> uh, you can find it on youtube instagram you can follow her um I, i'm doing this more like an alpha recommendation sort of stuff so <laughs> it's almost like a recommendation but it's pretty good in a way um so you can follow um uh, zoe on her site Oakley, which is on Instagram. Uh, are you on Facebook? No, just on Instagram, right? I am on Facebook, but I'm not active. So find me on Instagram. That would be better. I, all right. Because yeah. right, I, I tried, but uh, I, I just... Yeah, I am active. there. It's just I'm not active. So. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. And then you have Ismus. Go and follow them. Recommended. Their songs are amazing. Uh, produced by Francis. And the yeah. team is really good. And you can follow them on Instagram. You can find also Zoe's music there. So you can follow them on YouTube as well. And of course, the featured music definitely is yeah. uh, by our guest speaker today, uh, <laughs> Zoe, it's featured there. Uh, some other stuff that I just uh, wanted to give you guys, so I'm just doing this recommendation, something new for our podcast, uh, for our program is recommending some stuff. If you guys are sort of like, you know, in this time of seasons, you're trying to look for something, well, here are some recommendations you guys can check out. Uh, Theology podcast is by one of also another HDBB person his name is Ezra Jalin so shout out to Ezra you you started this stuff amazing uh, two weeks ago we had Malaysian Christian Means by Adriel Teo from SPTC we had him share his story uh, I'm, I didn't feature him this time sorry buddy but we featured you two weeks ago so you are there Malaysian uh, Christian Means pocket full of grace you know it's about Christian poems in country and musings um, and King Canvas to empower each other in truth and love, one conversation. Go check that out. I, I, I've watched some of their things. They've been really encouraging. Uh, and then you have this amazing artist, uh, Ponder Podcast, the Cat, uh, Courage Catalog. And mind you guys, all these uh, Malaysian podcasters that some of them have just started, it's really encouraging. Just like Zoe started a business last year and us, these podcasters, uh, some of them, um, actually most of them that I'm showing to you guys right now have just recently started only their podcast to build and encourage one another. So what a time, right? Uh, during this MCO, right? Anything can happen as long as you know, you choose to have hope. And when you have hope, you have all this kind of stuff. Um, and then you have Raw Christian Podcast this is really good as well. And Train of Thought, a podcast. So Go and check them out. They're pretty good if, uh, if, you, if you're really bored during this time of season. And last but not least, uh, I have this uh, podcast by a friend called uh, Ling Yar. Uh, so she started this called So This Is My Why. You can check her podcast out. Uh, it's a podcast inspiring people about their journey to discovering and living their why or purpose in life. Uh, so this is uh, 37 episodes. You can go and check it out. Two seasons, they're really amazing. I, I've only heard three, but they're really good uh, by different guest speakers. So you guys can check them out. And uh, yeah, and with that, I'd just like to thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, again, you know, when I just started, I uh, apologize for this lack a bit of... Uh, you see how nervous when you 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 have a guest speaker so anointed. I'm ah, joking, joking. Don't want to put the pressure on Zoe. So I should come after this. Don't do this. <laughs> um, but yeah, really, really thank you, Zoe, and to those Facebook audience uh, for tuning in. Um, 
Last but not least, our next upcoming talk uh, is not next week. We're going to have a break, but the week after we have a guy, uh, none other than Ryan Tan, who's going to speak on financial planning. So for those who would like to tune in, uh, join us on this uh, Facebook Live page again uh, in two weeks' time where we'll get to know more about how do we uh, plan for our financial needs. But mm. until then, right, see you guys and take care. Bye-bye.